Hi, it's Taylor. I'm going to break down some complex topics today in a brief video. So listen up. If you've been wondering what one-itis is or even what an alpha widow is, I want to explain it and make it very simple for you to understand. These two are complementary, parallel, equivalent concepts. The alpha widow for females and one-itis for males. So if you don't know, if you haven't heard these terms thrown around before, don't worry, you're not weird. These are unique terms that are used in the red pill manosphere world, uh, and some of us are more familiar than others. But we do need to revisit it because there are some misconceptions about it, and this connection isn't actually a common one that anybody makes. It's kind of unique to me. I remember bringing it up a couple of times, and I've pieced this one together myself. So this is some customized uh, content from me to you. So one-itis, if you're not sure, it's kind of like that she was the one scenario. It's the fairy tale, Disney World, you know, La La Land kind of romance idea that makes it seemed like that one girl that it didn't work out with got away and you didn't measure up and you're never going to do as good as that woman and you're never going to have a chance to be fully happy because of how this just fell apart and it haunts you. So obviously this isn't true. There isn't just one soulmate, right? It's That's kind of perpetuated by the whole Disney World um, fantasy. But it is true that you can have like this traumatic breakup, especially if it's, you know, devastating, if there's a lot involved, if it's a marriage, if there's a divorce and kids in custody. But usually it happens a little bit earlier on where a man gets stuck on a woman in his formidable years, uh, maybe in his 20s or early 30s. And oftentimes it just makes him lose confidence and it rips him apart emotionally because maybe that was the first time he really felt like he was intimate with someone, that he kind of was transparent. Some may say vulnerable, but I don't like using that word with men, although having that emotional connection is basically a vulnerability, right? Because you have to risk in order to connect. So there is an element of emotional risk, but it's not about being a bleeding heart and pouring your emotions all over the place. That's not the goal. But maybe that's what happened, and maybe that's why she left. But maybe she was a, a, a beautiful girl. Maybe there were a lot of sort of superficial qualities that made her stand out in the first place. And this guy has fallen so deeply in love with this woman that he sees her with rose-colored glasses. He doesn't see her flaws. He doesn't see the red flags. And so he's built up in his mind that he he let this diamond slip through his fingers. Now that's probably in the early stages of heartbreak, right? Like feeling rejected and, and just the, the, the normal and natural process of grief through heartbreak after the ending of a relationship. But later on, as that dissipates, you may still have a residue of the wounds that this causes. So this one-itis recovery, it's in stages and you need to recognize that that betrayal or that abandonment, right? You might feel injured in a way emotionally and like you can't connect very well after that. Maybe you have a fear of commitment. Maybe you feel like you, you don't want to open up and, and be emotional or vulnerable again. So you lack uh, an ease of trust, of giving trust to someone new. And so you're not really pining over the girl anymore, but you do have these issues that you need to sort out. This is still baggage. This is the, the chips on your shoulders from this breakup that are being perpetuated and preventing you from moving on and having a successful life and recognizing that there's going to be another one. So you don't have to focus on that particular one. It might just be the one that hurt you the most. So this also parallels now to the alpha widow in regards to women. So very, very similar, the same sort of situation where the woman is all caught up in this macho guy, that's why he's the alpha, uh, and she's the widow, so he's done a number on her. Maybe he 
mistreated her. Maybe he just seduced her. And it was like a big whirlwind romance. And she fell madly in love, uh, let go of all of her guards and walls and fell for him hook, line, and sinker. And then maybe he rejected her. Maybe he betrayed her. Uh, For whatever reason, it ended badly. And so then she is left just sort of defeated and deflated and her confidence is is low and she's so confused and maybe obsessed about him. And perhaps there's that lingering seduction where, um, and that's where the reference comes from a lot is that he was like her sexual dominator or something. And so she is now reeling with regret for losing her chance at this prime specimen of a man. And so at the beginning of this process of healing from the breakup, she's also going to be pining and obsessing and feeling that grief. But as this, the stages of grief perpetuate and uh, you know it gets better, you won't necessarily see so much of that, but you might see again those wounds, the baggage from that traumatic experience. And so she needs to work through her lack of trust, inability to trust, fear of commitment, fear of abandonment likely. And definitely it's going to take some time and she's going to have to process it in order to have a successful relationship with the next person as well. So one way that I described this uh, with a physical injury analogy to a client of mine was imagine you broke your leg falling out of a tree, right? Eventually you go through like physio, you go through like maybe you know, so whatever the the medical treatment is for a broken leg, or maybe there is some more um, injury involved. Once you go through all of that recovery and rehabilitation, you may be a little bit intimidated to climb up a tree again, right? Like you might be a little bit hesitant. Uh, And so it takes some time for you to work up that courage to climb back up that tree and do whatever it was that you were doing to begin with that you loved so much. So that's my analogy for you today. Um, and I think we can all relate to that. So I would hope that this clears up the concept of one a little bit and the concept of an alpha widow, if you've never heard that either. But I hope this was helpful uh, in explaining what one is and what being an alpha widow is as well and how they're related. Because a lot of times we talk about one or the other, but we don't see how it's complementary in the opposite sex. So there you go.